There have been dozens of cases where YouTubers were exposed to be predators or have serious allegations against them, but we're going to explore nine of the most infamous cases, starting with Dream. In the world of Minecraft YouTubers, Dream stands out as one of the most popular content creators, establishing a very loyal audience of more than 30 million subscribers. However, little did anyone know, it would be elements from within this diehard community that would later bring to light serious allegations of inappropriate behavior associated with him. Everything began on the 3rd of October 2022, when a girl named Anastasia stated the following on october 3rd 2022 a girl named anastasia tweeted out he's only face revealing because he's scared that i'll do it first and then she followed it up by tweeting i'm too tired slash real life struggling to get involved but the youtuber trending right now already face revealed to me years ago when he was flirting with me when i was a minor even though the allegations were made after dream's face reveal anastasia tweeted that dream had been flirting with her since she was too young while this was one of the major allegations leveled against dream it did have a lot of inconsistencies with many people being unsure about the authenticity of these claims at the time dream Dream was one of the most hated people on the internet, and people joined in on the bandwagon, celebrating the fact that Dream had been outed as a predator. However, these claims amounted to very little, as no concrete proof has been provided by Anastasia, and she has since made her Twitter account private. I didn't have any inappropriate contact with this person. I didn't have any sexual contact with this person. I hardly even remember who this person is at all. And the only messages I could even find with this person were friendly Twitter DMs. And even in those Twitter DMs, I mentioned that they had 18 in their bio, which they contradict. I definitely didn't face reel to them. That's an obvious lie. Many expected Dream to take a break from the internet and public eye for a while. But instead, he seemed to worsen the already heated situation. He posted a TikTok joke related to minors, which he quickly deleted due to the backlash it generated. All right, let's see what was sent into my P.O. box today. Looks like a t-shirt. Okay. All right. Uh, what does it say? This move drew widespread criticism and raised doubts about how seriously he was addressing these allegations. Finally, on the 19th of December 2023, Dream released a highly anticipated video of him talking about the allegations brought forward against him. The video not only addressed the accusations related to grooming, but also dove into his previous scandals as well. In this video, I'm going to be very vulnerable, open, and honest. I go into my past, I go into controversies, and I also debunk very serious lies about me, including by involving the police, legal teams, and extensive research. After recent dramas and controversies have come to light, Dream decided to go scorch earth on haters. Dream might have thought this was going to be the end of these allegations, but he would soon be mistaken, because it wasn't long after the first accusation of grooming when a girl named Amanda shared a series of TikTok videos detailing her encounter with Dream. Amanda asserted that Dream had engaged in grooming behavior towards her, and that the two of them had planned to meet at a private location when she was not old enough. To maybe February 10th is the time frame where we were sitting. I informed him that I was coming to Orlando in August, and it was suggested that we meet up and have sex. These allegations garnered even more attention when a user reposted Amanda's videos on Twitter, which received an overwhelming response, accumulating over 4,000 likes and creating new hashtag trends such as Dream is a Freak and Dream is a Groomer. In response to the community's allegations, Dream addressed the situation by sharing a tweet longer message on October 15. In the statement, he firmly denied the allegations of grooming, stating that while the interactions were legitimate, they were purely friendly and not intended to be of sexual nature. Yesterday, a thread was posted that had screenshots of Twitter DMs from me from 2020. I believe these DMs are real. In these DMs, there are no inappropriate comments whatsoever. It was just a friendly conversation. In these screenshots, them being 18 years old is mentioned in their bio, and I also clearly asked them for their age. I did not act inappropriately with this person. Later, Amanda also claimed that she had filed a police report against Dream in a tweet where she showed herself inside of a police station. Lastly, once again, she said she was going to take legal action. She then tweeted a picture of the inside of a police station and also said she'll come back with more evidence. According to Amanda, this is what the entire timeline of their interactions looked like. After I added her on Snapchat on January 17th, 2022, that we started sexting. She showed that her birthday when she would turn 18 is on February 17th, exactly a month later. She claims that we sexted from around the 17th of January, the day I added her on Snapchat, to the 10th of February, and then that it stopped. She said that while she was still underage, we exchanged notes. Her evidence of this was two photos of, supposedly me, from after she was 18, complimenting her. Her final important claim was that she traveled to Orlando in August and that we planned to meet up and have sex. And I just want to make sure that I blatantly deny this before continuing. None of this is true. While Amanda had said that Dream had sent her inappropriate messages, she provided no history of these conversations except two screenshots of the messages he had sent her, which obviously could have been photoshopped or altered in some way. Now honestly this is pretty useless information because there's almost no messages in the logs at all, but it's still extremely weird that she was asked for these logs many times, it takes 5 minutes to download, and she never did it. 
probably because it doesn't support what she was saying. On top of those things, from everything she had told me, she was 19, and we had no inappropriate contact. Amanda had also deleted many of her old replies and tweets, possibly because they could have incriminated her of providing any false information. After her allegations, she deleted a lot of evidence. She unliked a lot of tweets she had liked. She deleted replies of hers on Twitter and TikTok that hurt her credibility or contradicted what she was saying. She deleted Instagram DMs to me and only got caught because she accidentally showed them in an old TikTok of hers. And that's all completely factual and documented. Dream also shared that he did contact the police station asking if they had any proof of a complaint filed against him. Turns out, there were none. Criminal and civil. I didn't find anything under either one of those names. And there was no information at all. I was not even in their system. But just when he thought the controversy was over, Dream faced additional accusations related to more inappropriate interactions with his fans. Because in 2023, a user by the name of Burner22 posted a series of Snapchat videos claiming Dream had sent inappropriate videos to an underage girl named Jamie. When they posted this allegation, attached was a video that, of course, went viral. It was a video from another phone of a Snapchat being opened, supposedly from Dream, that had moaning in the background and a very sexual caption. As the people behind the Burner22 account were anonymous, no one still knows who they were, but they were confident confident about the evidence they had, even posting on their bio that they would give out all the information to Dream if he decided to sue them. However, in Dream's video, he posted a statement from Jamie herself, which was posted just a day before Dream uploaded his video. And while it was brief, Jamie clearly stated that she was not in fact a victim, and that she would just like to be left out of this entire situation. This allegation is not from a victim. It is from an anonymous Twitter account that was made the same day as the allegation. This anonymous person claims that I groomed a girl named Jamie. They did not ever contact Jamie. They did not know Jamie. They got none of their information from Jamie. They even incorrectly said that she quit the internet years ago when she's still active to this day. They posted videos claiming to be from me to a minor. They never showed proof that it was from me or my Snapchat profile. They never showed proof of who it was to. They cropped contacts from screenshots, lied publicly and said I admitted the videos were from me. They falsely alluded to the fact that the victim gave them permission and ended up causing massive harassment and terror to Jamie, who they said was a victim of mine. After putting out the video, Burner22 deactivated their account and for now, their identity still remains a mystery. However, unlike Dream, where the whole controversy involved only allegations, the same can definitely not be said about the YouTuber Linemaker. Linemaker first entered the YouTube scene in July 2013, focusing primarily on Minecraft content, particularly hide and seek adventures on various maps. However, the turning point came on September 15, 2015, when Keemstar, a prominent figure in the YouTube commentary community, uploaded a video featuring a mother accusing Linemaker of inappropriate behavior toward her 13 year old daughter during a Skype interaction. In the video, she claimed that Line Maker had solicited explicit photos from her daughter. What is your reaction at that? I mean, it's a, it's a 27 year old man asking your 13 year old daughter for news. Well, at this point in time, I didn't know he was 27 or 26 or whatever age he's supposed to be. Linemaker strongly denied these allegations, stating that he had fallen victim to hacking, a claim that was met with doubt from the YouTube community. As the accusations gained momentum, more disturbing claims came to light, including a video titled My Crazy File Experience with Linemaker with Proof. In this video, posted by a 16-year-old named Steven Jinks, it was alleged that Linemaker had offered him $500 for explicit photos. With a video titled My Crazy File Experience with Linemaker Studios, with proof. In this 45 minute video, Steven explains that he has been friends with Lion Maker since he's been 14 years of age. And when he was 15, Lion Maker started linking him a lot of porn on Skype and then asked him for nudes and offered to pay him $500. Despite repeatedly claiming to be a victim of hacking and blackmail, the YouTube community remained skeptical, adding to the growing scrutiny. Another YouTuber, Colossal's Crazy, contributed to the expose by creating a video that sheds light on Lion Maker's manipulative behavior, sending shockwaves throughout the platform. Colossal Crazy took it a step further by inviting Line Maker to an interview, during which Line Maker struggled to provide a clear response to the question, is it f***ed up if a 28-year-old man to date a 16-year-old? You can say the same for me. If I'm in a relationship with a 16-year-old, I'm 28, same age as you, is that f***ed up? It's a very, very simple question. You only have to answer yes or no. I, I don't, Colossal. Because it's, 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 I find it's, it interesting that you're dodging that question when it's a very- The controversy then took a darker turn when Line Maker faced allegations of sharing explicit content involving an underage girl and attempting to manipulate her publicly. As the controversy intensified, Line Maker mysteriously disappeared from the internet. And on the 20th of January 2018, YouTube deleted his channel forever. However, the silence was broken in December of 2018 when Line Maker's ex-girlfriend, Paige the Panda, released a video detailing her negative experience with him, providing a 
glimpse into Lion Maker's troubling history. I took him to court because for three years of my life we were in an online relationship. Um, and in those three years it was basically just abuse, mental and sexual kind, so, you know. Legal repercussions finally caught up to Lion Maker as he faced charges related to his questionable relationship, resulting in him spending time in a Belgian jail cell for 10 months. Despite the gravity of the situation, Lion Maker attempted to return to YouTube in 2019 with a new Minecraft channel, carefully sidestepping any direct acknowledgement of his troubled past. However, YouTube once again deleted his channel in June 2020. During an Instagram Live, Lion Maker attempted to talk more about the situation, but would end up having a mental breakdown in front of his viewers. You can't face the truth. You can't face it. Like face value. Face value. Because you're all fucking delusional. This would be what many believe to be the moment that Linemaker's career had officially ended, and Linemaker himself has yet to return to the internet. While Linemaker attempted to prove himself innocent by attending these interviews, our next YouTuber, Minilad, would try the very same tactic, except this time, he was able to escape with any accountability and even got the chance to save his career in the process. Craig Thompson, also known as Minilad on YouTube, became one of the largest creators who was exposed to be a pedophile. Known for his multiplayer games like Golf Hit, Cards Against Humanity, and Reddit videos, he built a very large fan base that loved his entertaining style. However, on the 23rd of June 2020, things changed drastically when two women, Hallie and Ash, accused Minilad on Twitter of manipulating them when they were underage. Facing these accusations, Minilad apologized publicly on Twitter and took a break until August 2020. When he returned, he didn't fully explain the reasons for his break, saying it was for another mental health journey similar to one he had earlier in the year. The situation took another turn on the 4th of September 2020 when Minilad posted a now-deleted video titled, Clearing the Air. In this video, he briefly talked about the essay allegations and responded to new accusations from a Twitter user named Miles about inappropriate behavior at Camp 17, a meet and greet set up by Minilad and other creators. The first thing that I wanted to talk about with these allegations is I've never physically met them before, nor have I physically abused anybody across the board. Following this, Miles' tweet got a response from another prominent YouTuber called Terrorizer who used to be close friends with Minilad before their friendship broke apart in 2019. Terrorizer publicly apologized for Minilad's behavior on his behalf. Despite the wave of dislikes and negative comments on his videos, Minilad continued posting content without directly addressing the situation for the next three months until the 7th of December 2020 when he stopped uploading without any warning. Three weeks later, on the 20th of December, Minilad resurfaced with a video titled My Apology where he directly confirmed confronted the initial allegations. In this video, he pledged to see his viewers in 2021, marking another pivotal moment in his controversial YouTube journey. Minilad's subsequent on and off returns to YouTube were consistently met with disdain from his audience. The controversy, coupled with his handling of the situation, casted a long shadow over his once thriving channel. He would still continue posting to this day, though the amount of views and subscribers he garners would hit a new low, and wouldn't reach the same heights he had used to before all the controversy. Like Minilad, James Charles once stood as a prominent figure, actively engaging with renowned creators like PewDiePie, hosting a reality TV show, and boasting a thriving channel that garnered over 100 million monthly views. But his career took a significant blow when a young TikToker accused James Charles of sending inappropriate messages. James initially responded on Twitter, asserting he believed the TikToker was 18, stating, The accusation that I have given this person is completely false. I asked how old he was right away and he told me he was 18, so I started flirting back. Later in the day, he said a few things that made me question the validity of his original answer, and when I asked him to to confirm his age once again, he admitted he was 16. I told him I was really uncomfortable and apologized for flirting, but he insisted on continuing talking. However, as more victims came forward to detail their experiences with James Charles, skepticism grew around his explanation. In response, James Charles uploaded a video titled Holding Myself Accountable where he confronted the allegations and admitted to acting from a place of desperation, acknowledging the severity of his actions. Now, within the past couple of weeks, two different people, both under the age of 18, have recently come forward saying that they had inappropriate messages with me on social media, uh, one of them being from last year and one of them being from more recent. Uh, in both of these cases, I added these people on Snapchat, asked how old they were right away, was told that they were 18, believed them, engaged in a flirty conversation, and then later on found out that they were actually 16. Uh, upon finding out, I was immediately embarrassed and blocked both people. These conversations should have never happened, point blank period. There's no excuse for it, there's no if, ands, or buts, and I take full responsibility for that. 
The YouTube community, however, remained unconvinced, with critics highlighting the seemingly insincere tone. The consequences were swift and severe. James Charles' channel was demonetized from the platform, he lost a significant makeup deal worth millions, and was dropped as the host of the reality TV show, Instant Influencer. His sponsorships evaporated, leading to substantial financial setbacks, his subscribers plummeted drastically, and average views per month dwindled from a staggering 150 million to now 20 million. The fall from grace took a toll on James Charles' reputation, with social media flooding with negative sentiments. After a three-month hiatus from the online world, James Charles returned to the platform attempting to fix his career with another apology video, titled An Open Conversation. However, this video also received criticism. People thought James Charles didn't seem truly sorry, and many felt like this video focused too much on his own feelings and how he was harmed by the situation, instead of talking about the actual victims. This is what many people believe to be the final nail in the coffin for James Charles. After losing tons of views and subscribers, he still seemed set on fixing his reputation and still continues posting videos to this day without any hint of stopping or showing any accountability. Jinbop, also known as Starlet, became popular for his engaging and funny gameplay videos. It seemed like he was on track to becoming one of the biggest Minecraft creators in the community, but everything changed when he suddenly disappeared without any warning, leaving his fans in the dark. The last video on Jinbop's channel was posted on the 10th of August 2016, sparking curiosity among his fans about his abrupt silence. But this silence was broken on the 9th of September 2016, when the YouTube news channel Scarce released a now-deleted video that linked Jinbop to serious criminal allegations. Scarce and his team investigated Jinbop's background, connecting his name to public court documents that detailed disturbing aspects of his alleged crimes and arrest. The story unfolded with Jinbop, 23 at the time, initiating contact in the summer of 2015 with a girl who was a fan and helped produce art for him. The relationship, initially just friendly chats on Skype, developed into something more. This relationship was even hinted at by a user named Queen Cat, who recalled being in a Skype call where they interacted inappropriately with each other. I was in a Skype call with him and one of the victims he was convicted of. Grooming. It's truly baffling to me now. I just sat there as they flirted, and he played his guitar for us. Looking back, I wondered why no one ever stopped him from doing that. Jinbop and the girl continued talking for months after first contact, but in early 2016, the girl's parents began noticing unusual changes in her behavior, including wearing revealing clothes and wearing a necklace with a picture of an unfamiliar man who turned out to be Jinbop. Because of this, they decided to secretly record a conversation between their daughter and Jinbop, during which he was heard talking about extremely inappropriate topics clearly aware of her age. By March 2016, Jinbop suggested that they meet in Florida, prompting the girl's parents to inform the FBI. On the 20th of May 2016, the FBI recorded a 30-minute Skype call between Jinbop and the girl, where they were heard discussing explicit acts. The call immediately helped the FBI determine Jinbop's involvement in severe crimes and began tracking his activity. They located his IP address, home address, found his name and email, which were all obtained after the FBI submitted a request to the company Jinbop's email was connected to. At this time, the FBI had solid evidence to back up the allegations, and on the 2nd of August, the FBI submitted a criminal complaint to the district court and requested an arrest warrant for him, where he was subsequently arrested on charges related to CP. After his trial, Jinbop had been sentenced to 7 years in prison. However, according to the Federal Bureau of Prisons website, Jinbop was released on the 2nd of June 2022, citing good behavior as a reason for his early release. Jinbop never made any move to return to YouTube after his release, and was never to be seen on the platform again. Unlike most of the YouTubers on this list, Jinbop didn't explain himself or offer an apology, but the same cannot be said for our next YouTuber, Kaneko Kitten. The Roblox community was recently shaken by a controversy involving Kaneko Kitten, a prominent figure known for his Roblox-related content. On the 6th of January 2021, Kaneko Kitten suddenly released a now-deleted 55-page Google document about Narpy, who was his ex-boyfriend. The document, which has been archived in a Google Drive folder, contained alleged claims that Narpy had engaged in a manipulative and inappropriate relationship with Kaneko Kitten, who was 20 years old at the time. The document outlines different accusations, including claims that Narpy had used mental health issues and self tools to develop a relationship. Additionally, it alleged that Narpy had made false accusations of pedophilia towards Kaneko Kitten. This discovery sparked significant reactions within the Roblox community. However, the narrative took an unexpected turn when Narpy, in a video released on October 28th, presented his side of the story. Narpy refuted the claims of manipulation, asserting that their relationship was entirely mutual. Additionally, Narpy shared insights into his own experiences, revealing that he was groomed into certain preferences and the normalization of explicit content. He also claimed that Kaneko Kitten had dated a girl who was too young when Kaneko was 20 years old. For those who don't know, Naku was a 16-year-old girl Kaneko dated back in 2019 while he was 20 years old. Kaneko and Naku were together while him and I were being 
chat with each other over Discord. After they broke up, Kaneko would go on to make a statement about their relationship, justifying it by claiming that their relationship was purely platonic and that he was not a pedophile because he was not sexual with Naku. Acknowledging the gravity of this situation, Kaneko admitted to the allegations made against him. I obviously could have handled this in a much different and better way than a manipulative one-sided document, and I do apologize for doing that. This document is very manipulative and it paints our entire relationship to be as if it's one-sided or that I never gave in or was complicit with this relationship whatsoever. I made several excuses for my actions in this relationship and made it seem like it was not a mutual relationship between the two of us. And for that, I am sorry for that. Kaneko Kitten responded to the controversy through a now deleted YouTube video and post on his community tab. The responses from the community were mixed, reflecting the complex nature of the unfolding events. As indicated in his community, post, Kaneko hinted at a potential return to online platforms, but notably not on his original Kaneko Kitten channel. As of now, all of Kaneko Kitten's videos have been hidden, and none of his videos are available to watch, as his channel has now been deleted. Yandere Simulator, a video game by Yandere Dev, was once a very popular game on YouTube, captivating millions of viewers with its unique concept of a murderous Japanese schoolgirl. However, the game has been in development for almost a decade, and Yandere Dev's actions have caused quite a bit of controversy along the way. The journey began over 9 years ago when Yandere Dev began creating Yandere Simulator. At its peak, the game garnered millions of views, leading to plenty of financial support from Patreon and a partnership with TinyBuild. Yet as time passed, the promise of substantial updates dwindled, and TinyBuild severed ties with Yandere Dev due to disagreements about how the game was being developed. As the updates became less frequent, people began discussing the choices Yandere Dev made in the game. There were concerns about the game's overly explicit nature, especially since the characters depicted were high school students. Further controversy ensued when Yandere Yandere Dev would regularly share the idea of getting rid of the age of consent. This year, the controversy took a darker turn with the release of a video showcasing alleged Snapchat screenshots. The screenshots suggested that Yandere Dev had been texting an underage girl and attempting to shift the blame onto them, even trying to portray himself as the victim. The situation eventually attracted the attention of another prominent YouTuber, Penguin Zero, who had to say this about the situation. What's currently going on with Yandere Dev? So over the course of eight years, everyone has paid attention to every single minute that this guy has broadcast his life online as well as the way he conducts himself with his fans and it's led to a lot of less than savory things being revealed and this past week has been the worst week for him when a lot of screenshots came out from snapchat conversations as well as some other very serious allegations levied against him all hit the public eye so this one here has been making the rounds you're the one traumatizing me that's allegedly yandere dev cosplay fan and they say, I'm sorry. And then he goes, this, this here is trauma. This is abuse. This is power imbalance. I am being emotionally abused by you. To which they respond, I'm 16. And then he goes, you have this massive blackmail over me. You're 35. And when I first saw this, it gave me a hearty belly laugh like Santa Claus. What an unbelievably creepy concerning exchange. In response to the mounting allegations, Yandere Dev released a statement attributing his actions to mental health issues. In a surprising turn, he chose not to defend himself and admitted to engaging in inappropriate interactions with this person. A few months back, a fan of the game DM'd me and wanted to chat. She let me know that she was 16. Occasionally, she would say something flirty towards me. Most of the time, I would shut that down immediately. However, there were times I didn't shut it down. There is no excuse. It is an outright f up, pure and simple. The statement concludes with a pledge to donate to a charity supporting abuse survivors. I've donated $1,000 to Rain, an organization that provides care and benefits to survivors of abuse. As the controversy unfolded, Yandere Simulator faced many internal challenges. Artists, voice actors, and other volunteers involved in the game distanced themselves from the project, further complicating its already turbulent development. Ever since, support from the game has dwindled, and many people are just waiting for the moment Yandere Dev loses all financial support, and he has no choice but to leave Yandere Simulator in its unfinished state state. Still, Yandere Dev has posted another blog post, saying that he was going to stay away from the internet to work on the game and for his own mental health. However, unlike Yandere Dev, who took accountability for his disturbing behavior towards underage fans, the next person on this list, Onision, did the complete opposite. Onision initially gained popularity during the early era of YouTube for posting comedic content about random topics. However, when he was exposed to be a predator, everything changed forever. From allegations of essay, offensive and borderline harmful videos, to child 
of neglect, Onision's career quickly took a dramatic turn with alarming controversies following another. One of the biggest controversies involved him organizing a website where his underage fans would send pictures of themselves, which he would then rate based on their attractiveness. Now we're going to cover exactly what you guys demand. How Onision rates you 1 to 10. It's what you want, and so I will deliver. These evaluations often took a disturbing turn, becoming overly sexual and body shaming, causing widespread sites within his community. I'd rate you a 5 out of 10. 7.9 out of 10. Like a 9 out of 10, an 8 out of 10. Meanwhile, this girl's like a um, 8 out of 10. Yeah, solid 8. But Greg, what if she's 15 years old? Uh, well, last time I checked, we're allowed to have opinions about people. It's not a perverted thing. It's honesty. In 2012, Onision's controversies took a darker turn when he began messaging a fan named Lucas. The individual, who has gone by various names, became a central figure in Onision's content after their marriage in 2012. Disturbingly, Onision allegedly used online forums to connect with younger fans, engaging with them, and even discussing inappropriate things with them. In 2019, both Onision and Lucas faced serious accusations from multiple women who claimed that both had grown them when they were not old enough. While less active on YouTube after all this controversy, Onision remained active on Twitter, where he continued to post disturbing content and offensive tweets. But the controversy reached new heights in January of 2021, when a Discovery Plus documentary featuring Chris Hansen of To Catch a Predator presented the claims against Onision. The documentary detailed how he allegedly groomed individuals, then used his fame to undermine their stories and encourage harassment. Hey everyone, Chris Hansen here on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. We're going to continue this evening on our investigation of Onision, who's a YouTube streamer who's been accused of being a predator. Chris Hansen eventually showed up to Onision's house for an interview, and this is how it went. 911, what are you recording? Hi, uh, there's a person who's been stalking me online and they just showed up to my house. Okay, and they're outside now? Yes, they're knocking on my door. Onision immediately called 911 after noticing that Chris Hansen was at his front door. And what do we know his name at all? It's Chris Hansen. Facing investigations and controversies, Onision announced his departure from YouTube they day after the documentary series finale, blaming his YouTube channel's demonetization as a reason. However, this exit from YouTube didn't mark the end of his troubles. Onision continued with activities that raised concerns, leading to a critical moment that threatened his future. In 2023, Onision found himself amid a severe lawsuit, facing allegations of grooming and engaging with his fans. Remember those girls back in 2019 who claimed that Onision and his partner Lucas had groomed them? Well, one of those girls, Regina Alonso, had finally stepped forward to file a lawsuit against them. The legal battle highlighted the seriousness of the accusations and the lasting impact of Onision's actions. Meanwhile, Onision has been trying to defend himself by releasing documentaries on his channel, claiming all the allegations are false and portraying himself as the real victim. Cosmodor was another YouTuber who was exposed to have groomed his underage fans. Cosmodor, a once well-known cartoon video essayist, had garnered millions of views for his review videos, even allowing him to work as an editor under Saberspark, one of the biggest creators in the cartoon community. However, Cosmodor's darker side was revealed when it was alleged that he'd been engaging in an inappropriate conversation with a fan who was not of age. What's even more distressing is the emotional abuse he inflicted upon her, exploiting not only her artistic talent, but also shamefully underpaying her for her work. On the 27th of July 2020, Cosmodor released a community post admitting to a relationship with a girl while he was 19. It's widely believed that he eventually revealed this just to get ahead of any rumors and try to protect his reputation. In his post, he tried to make himself look like a victim and agreed that he was in the wrong. Cosmodor defended his actions by incorrectly stating that the age of consent in Germany is 14, not realizing that this only applies to underage people. As you may know, I live in Germany and age of consent laws are a little different here than they are in the United States as you're not considered a child anymore when you turn 14 and that's the environment I grew up in. Meaning he admitted to an illegal relationship without even knowing. The aftermath saw an outpouring of responses from multiple former friends who detailed their own experiences of emotional abuse and manipulation at the hands of Cosmodor. One big example of this is the YouTuber Alpha J Show, who had been close friends with Cosmodor, revealing that the two of them had fallen off due to Cosmodor's toxic personality off camera. The story took a massive turn when the main victim, past Halloween, came forward to detail her experiences with Cosmodor. Up until this point, nobody had known the true identity of her, and it was only when past Halloween bravely shared her experience in a video, exposing the extent of Cosmodor's abusive actions, that the world finally knew her identity. Some of you might know, I used to work with a cartoon YouTuber Cosmodor. I made stills and official art for him, and we were mutuals on social media. Some of you probably heard he was recently called out of being a girl 
I was his victim. Cosmo keeps pushing me at my limit and begging the internet for forgiveness and straight up lying to people's faces and every response he's made. However, instead of empathy and support, she faced a barrage of attacks from Cosmodor's fans to the point where she felt compelled to leave the internet for good. Because of all of these allegations, Cosmodor would release his own apology video where he attempts to defend himself. However, in his video, he only confirms that he was in a relationship with someone who was underage. I did try to keep my relationship a secret because I really didn't want people accusing me of being a pedophile, but that that is exactly what happened. I'm still being called a pedophile for it over something I did when I was a teenager and I can confidently say that is not the case. Admits to exchanging explicit content. I never exchanged notes with anyone. I never had any sexual conversation besides weird Rule 34 shit you can find on most every Twitter timeline. And admits that he was a harmful partner and was indeed undercharging past Halloween. Let me be clear that I was not a good boyfriend to my ex. I expected way too much of them. I made them undercharge the work they did for my channel mascot, which I have since retired because they said it gives them panic attacks and I don't want to worsen their mental state. I I publicly called them out over very minor mistakes and I stalked them when I couldn't get over them. On top of the rule 34, these are some severely terrible decisions I've made and I won't deny the damage this has likely caused, which I can't hope for my ex to ever forgive me for. Except none of Cosmodor's attempts to revive his channel worked, as in February 2022, his YouTube account was finally taken down from YouTube and he hasn't made any attempts at a comeback since then. However, unlike Cosmodor, who never attempted to make a comeback to YouTube after being exposed as a predator, Polcat324 did make a comeback to YouTube, though his view counts reflect his destroyed reputation. Polcat amassed over 1 million subscribers for his GTA 5 roleplay videos where he played a power tripping police officer in the Department of Justice, the most popular roleplay servers in GTA. However, in an extremely ironic twist, Polcat, who played as a police officer that catches criminals, actually turned out to be a criminal himself. In September 2022, a Twitter user named RoadrunnerSG revealed Snapchat screenshots of inappropriate conversations with Polcat dating back to 2015 and 2016. At the time, Roadrunner was obviously underage while Polcat was 22. The the exchanges often included Polcat exchanging gifts and money for explicit photos. And when Roadrunner uploaded the evidence, people were quick to assume that he faked the allegations. But these doubts were eventually dispelled when Roadrunner posted a live screen recording confirming the messages were indeed real. The story could have ended here, but things took another twist. As it turned out, Roadrunner wasn't the only person who had unsettling experiences with Polcat, because just a few days later, another user by the name of Garrett shared his own disturbing interactions with Polcat when he was not of age. I never came forward because I didn't think anyone would believe me, nor did I even think any of our chats existed. The chat logs contain extremely inappropriate things that clearly pointed to the evidence that he was a pedophile. In one of his messages, Polcat was seen saying, me and you both like a young. Garrett would then add on to this tweet by saying, Polcat and I got close because I was insecure and he seemed to make me feel special. Now I know it's obviously something he does with others who are underage. In wake of these allegations, the GTA roleplay community largely defended Polcat. The Department of Justice server even banned discussion about the grooming accusations, attempting to suppress his story. But despite these efforts, the truth eventually emerged, leading to a significant decline in Polcat's reputation and viewership. From averaging over 4 million views, he now barely surpasses 1 million views per month. Ever since then, Polcat has remained silent about the allegations, leaving his audience in the dark.